Welcome to the Daily Update, where I'll go over the action in the market for Tuesday, May 9th, and then we'll see how things look for Wednesday, May 10th. It was another sleepy day in the market. Monday's range was really small. Tuesday's range was really small, even though we finished down slightly. Hasn't really changed a lot of our technical picture for right now, but the markets are really waiting in anticipation of the CPI that will be released in Wednesday's session, and that might have an impact. Now, usually how these things go, if CPI comes in hot, that could be really negative for the market. If CPI comes in cold, that could be positive for the market. What we might end up seeing is usually what ends up happening where we hit just about the middle. Maybe the headline number is down, but the core rate is up or vice versa. And so we're getting some mixed signals. Or if you look deeper inside the report, there are some things that aren't really clear. And the market just doesn't really know what to do after that. In spite of that, we're still in a mixed environment overall where we have things that are pointing down. We have other things that are pointing up. So before I get started, I'm still traveling. I'll be traveling through this weekend. I'm probably not going to be able to make any of the weekend videos since that will be a travel time and then get home and rest time as I recuperate as best as possible. I do have a supplemental video that I posted a couple of days ago that talks about the interaction between interest rates and the stock market that some of you may find very helpful. I do have a podcast. It's right now just a carbon copy of what you're watching right now. I'm rethinking that to see if I'm going to change that format. Both with the podcast and the video, I do have a PDF of all the slides and charts that I use that's available in the description. I do have a private Facebook group that you're welcome to join, and then any other platforms that you might post to. And also, I don't have a poll posted for this week. I hope to resume that next week. So let's go back and talk about what happened. We had a lower open, and then we just kind of danced sideways after that. We opened down below S1 at 41.27. Prices then moved sideways, but we stayed above S2 at 41.16, and that was it. That was the range for the day. We were down 0.46% on below average volume, not necessarily a surprise. As I said, the technicals are rather mixed right now. We have some positive things. We have some negative things that we're focusing on, and it's not really clear right now what is the bias going to be. So what are some comments that we can make? The markets have been really quiet ahead of the CPI that will be released on Wednesday, about an hour before the market opens. There are continued concerns over the debt ceiling. There was a meeting on Tuesday between the president and congressional leaders. Not really much has been reported about what happened in that meeting. The dollar was up slightly and interest rates were up to slightly changed in Tuesday's session. The 10 to the 5 and the 30 to the 5 are back to being normal right now. We're still keeping an eye on the 10 to the 2 and the 10 to the 3 month. Those are the most important yields that we watch to signal if we're going to head into a recession. Sentiment is positive. We're at 61, where it had been at 60, even with the down day. It ticked up slightly. Our trend is still positive, but it's weakening because the ADX is below 20. It's also below its moving average. The green line is also coming down. I'm not really sure what to do with our bias right now because it's all up in the air as far as what's going to happen. So I've just kept it at positive for right now, and our momentum is mixed. You could have switched our bias over to mixed. The economic reports that came out on the chart that I look at, it said that nothing was coming up. We did get the NFIB Small Business Optimism Index. It ticked down yet again to 89, where last time it came in at 90.1. And both of these readings are pretty negative overall. Let's go back and look at our charts. The first chart just shows the intraday action where we gapped lower down below S1. We never made it down to S2 during the day, and then we just chopped sideways as the day went on and we finished pretty much near the low of the session. Intraday, we had been coming down in the overnight session. The futures were looking quite positive early on and then they just dropped as the European markets picked up and continued with things. There was not a lot of action that was decided in Tuesday's session and we're pretty much drifting a little bit higher after the close, waiting in anticipation of the CPI release. Growth still continues to outperform value, even though it was down more in Tuesday's session. Growth was down 0.46% versus 0.42% for value. 
where it was down less for mid caps and a little bit more for small caps. Sentiment not really showing a big change with the ulcer index. It's still showing that there's not a lot of fear in the markets. The VIX ticked up slightly on the line chart and it is going up a little bit on the bar chart. And then the VIX of the VIX is also pretty much chopping sideways right now as the market decides what it wants to do. The move index really hasn't shown a really big change. And then you compare that to the VIX, which has not changed all that much. We're pretty much in the midpoint right now with the move index with bond volatility measurements, where with stocks, we are showing a pretty complacent environment. The equity put call ratio, no real change here. We have not generated a new signal. Fear is starting to come up a little bit with this fear gauge that we look at, and it actually ticked down a little bit with the other fear gauge that we look at. We're still maintaining a risk-off posture for stocks right now. Looking at our advanced decline line, we tick down just a little bit based on price, and we also tick down a little bit based on volume. Longer term, we're still working off of this negative divergence where price was going up, but volume was not matching that. The new highs, new lows continue to trail with the five period as well as the 10 period moving average. The advanced decline ratio is just about at the midpoint. The accumulation distribution is still above the moving average, but it did tick down slightly. Broader range, we're right on the moving average with the NYSE, turned down a little bit with the S&P. We're a little bit below the moving average with the mid caps. We're still showing weakness with the small caps. Looking at the S&P where it was coming up and matching previous highs, the cumulative advanced decline line did not show that. That's another negative divergence, as is the advanced decline line itself. So we're keeping that in the background, which could lead to further price weakness going forward. Also looking at the common stock, we see a negative divergence where the advanced decline line was making a higher low, but it was making a lower low based on volume. Looking at our trend, the ADX continues to fall and it's below the moving average. The green line is still on top, but it is declining. However, we do default to the positive because the green line is on top. Volume is really starting to turn down again. Looking at our short-term chart, we really didn't decide all that much on the daily chart. We're a little bit below this pivot level. You can see at the bottom where the last two days volume has really dropped off. We're just a little bit below the 20 period simple moving average. We're right in between both of these measurements. The stochastics were at the midpoint with the short term coming up a little bit and pretty much at the midpoint with the intermediate term, we're still declining with the long term stochastic. The force index is just a little bit above zero. Looking at some intermediate term charts, we're falling below the dashed line with the balance of power. We're just a little bit below the double exponential moving average on this chart. The go no go system remains neutral and we're still above this longer term moving average going back to the all time high. This is a support level if we continue to fall at about 40.77. The TTM squeeze is also looking more negative than positive. Looking at our moving average study, we're turning a bit down with the 20 period, but we're at the midpoint as well as in the midpoint with the 50 period and also declining with the 200 period. The PPO still remains positive in the long and intermediate term, even though it's rolling over a little bit, and we're starting to see a little bit more weakness in the short term. The Arun is dropping now. The oscillator is below zero. That's negative. It was unchanged from Monday to Tuesday, but it is looking more negative. The McClellan oscillator also seeing this negative divergence where the S&P was going up, but the McClellan oscillator was not matching that. And the NYSE McClellan oscillator also shows this overall negative divergence. The Swinland Trading Oscillator, this is a bit positive. It ticked back up slightly based on price and volume. We're still working off of this longer term negative divergence. The Elder Impulse System remains positive for the S&P. The PMO is still negative both based on price and volume and the indicator itself continues to be negative. The PMO study also working off of this negative divergence. It turned down slightly with the PMOs that are rising. It was flat to slightly declining with the buy signals and we're pretty much flat with the PMOs that are above zero. The parabolic SAR remains negative. Our oscillators, we're looking at the slope. This is the touchiest of all of our oscillators. It would likely turn up if we start to see a shift 
Other than that, all of the other oscillators that we follow continue to be negative. We're just a little bit below the 20 period moving average, but other than that, we're still plotted above all the other moving averages in the moving average tree. We're still seeing a negative divergence with the BPI, and we are declining, but we're still above 50 with the overall reading. The NYSE BPI ticked up slightly, but it is below 50. The check in money flow is still positive, but continues to show weakness. Check in oscillators right about at the dashed line. The money flow is flat below 50, so that's more negative. The vortex has the red line on top. That is negative. The ultimate oscillator has dropped below 50. That is negative. On balance volume remains below the moving average. That's negative. And our summation index based on price is declining. We're also seeing this negative divergence based on volume, and we're dropping below zero with the volume indicator. We're also seeing this negative divergence when we look inside the S&P for the stocks that are above their 200-day moving average. It has been declining, but it did not go up as the S&P was going up, and we're seeing that same thing with the 50-period moving average. Here's another look at that same data showing the negative divergences. We're still having a real hard time breaking out above this quadrant line here on this chart. If CPI comes in friendly to the market, will we have enough gas in the tank, so to speak, to be able to push us higher? We are also just about at this 100% retracement level, which is at 41.23. We closed at 41.19. We also have overhead resistance at 41.56 if we start to go up. We have other support at 4020 if we continue to go down. Here's a chart that I didn't show yesterday. We're looking at this resistance level here where we draw a trend line between two major lows that we saw both in June and October of 2022. And then we create a parallel line that goes back to the all-time high. A lot of times what will happen is we'll bump right up into this and it will act as resistance and we'll turn and go the other way. We haven't reached that level yet, but we are keeping an eye on this. Our different charts show the Heiken Ashi with more of a doji looking candle here. The Kegi still remains negative, but the red line is pointing up. The Renko is positive. The three line break is positive. Comparing to other indexes, we still see the equal weight index underperforming the S&P. Looking at our new take on Dow Theory, we're still above this blue line. We are trying to break out here, even though we declined in Tuesday's session. We turned down a little bit, and we're just about on the blue line when we look at the NASDAQ. The transports continue to underperform the Dow, which sometimes can lead to weakness. The Dow is still just barely above this S1 level. That's holding as support for right now. We're above the 50 and 200 period moving average. The diamonds have remained at neutral. The NASDAQ is still chopping sideways. The NASDAQ 100 is also moving more or less sideways. The Qs have turned back to neutral. And we're still above this anchored moving average going back to the all-time high with the QQQs. If we do run into some trouble, will this support level hold at about 314? We're still above this 38.2% retracement with the NASDAQ 100. If we start to fall, we're looking at 12,864. Small caps continue to show weakness and a recent death cross. Looking at the Russell 2000 index, we have dropped below 50 with the RSI. The MACD is trying to improve, but it's pretty much on top of the moving average. Small caps continue to underperform large caps. The small caps have remained at neutral. The mid caps, we're getting really close to a death cross here. We're below the pivot. We do have this S1 level acting as support. If we run into problems, we'll be keeping an eye on this. The mid caps remain neutral. The micro caps were actually up a little bit and have not set a new 52 week low. The home builders, they're doing actually pretty well. When you look at the ETF overall, it's been rising. The ratio has also been rising, and they still have a real strong correlated relationship between them and the S&P 500. Just to keep an eye on the banks, the financial sector continues to show weakness. The financials are really underperforming the S&P. The regional ETF is continuing to underperform the financial sector. Looking at bonds, in the first area are the interest rate studies and analysis that we look at. I went through all the charts in the supplemental video, and I'm only going to show this chart for a while. 
I look at the other charts, but I don't want to talk about them every day unless they're actually telling us something. We're still at the midpoint. We're right inside the rainbow right now. We're waiting to see, is this ratio going to break to the upside or is it going to break to the downside? Bond yields were up slightly in Tuesday's session and bond prices were down. We're keeping an eye on the spread between the S&P 500 and the long-term bond. They have a strong longer-term correlated relationship. The shorter-term relationship is improving, but they're having a tendency to go in opposite directions. The spread declined just a little bit here in Tuesday's session, but it's still pretty high overall. Long term, we're keeping an eye on the special K. We're now starting to drop below the moving average. Long term, though, we're still holding up. The MACD is above zero and advancing, even though it's rolling over a little bit. We're above this downward sloping trend line, suggesting that this breakout is legitimate. An update of a few of our possible positive scenarios. The Qs were down a little bit compared to the S&P. Discretionary is just a little bit above the moving average. Large cap growth is outperforming large cap value. We're also seeing that in our growth to value ratio. The mid caps are doing a little bit better, but the small caps are continuing to lag. The utilities continue to underperform the S&P. We're still below zero with our five period moving average, taking the highs minus the lows of the Amex, NASDAQ, and NYSE in a good solid environment. We want this to break above zero, and it has not done that. Longer term, though, we're still hanging in there with our 50-period exponential moving average of the new highs minus the new lows, even though it turned down slightly. The indicator itself is now giving a reading at 2. It's still positive, even though it's showing some weakness. So what's our outlook for Wednesday? Earnings season continues. CPI is the big thing that the markets are waiting for. Our technicals are still mixed overall. Looking at the economic reports that come out, of course, we'll get the weekly MBA mortgage index. We'll also get CPI. That's the big one. The Treasury budget will be coming out, and then the whole list of geopolitical events. We're waiting to see if anything else has developed out of that meeting concerning the debt ceiling. One thing that I wanted to cover that came out a few days ago, Dan Beard, in his weekly email, he has some comments concerning CPI. And the first thing that he said, I'm just quoting him here, it says, it is forecast to come in flat at 5%. That's what the market's anticipating. Earlier this week, it was actually forecast to come in higher at 5.2%. He thinks that there's a potential that it actually comes in much higher than expected, and then he explains why. The way the annual CPI is calculated, it's on a 12-month rolling window. Last month, a very large increase dropped off, which brought it in much lower than expected. However, this month, a very small one will drop off that was already calculated, so it won't have the same effect as last month. In fact, that could result in a higher than expected inflation number. If that happens, along with last week's strong jobs number, it might reignite fear of the Fed raising one more time. The good news about this is that the following two months will drop two big increases. So in June and July, the CPI report will look like inflation is dropping off a cliff. Just something to keep in mind. Looking at our Stock Traders Almanac statistics, I'm just going to focus on this for May 10th. The Dow is the most positive index. It's up 61.9% of the time. The S&P is neutral to positive, being up a little more than 50%. With the NASDAQ's a little weaker, coming in up only 42.9% of the time. And then the next slide applies to the whole year. And this is more positive than negative overall, but we're just waiting in the short to intermediate term for those positive things to kick in. Our scenario is hard to go with the down one or the up one right now because the market is really unsure what direction we will go in. Our indicators are still suggesting we're in a sideways or neutral trend because the ADX is weakening. It's below its moving average. Both of them are also below 20. It's still positive with the green line on top, but the green line is declining. Some warning signs. There are numerous negative divergences that are all coming together that I've been trying to point out. The VIX is still showing a lot of complacency. The S&P is underperforming utilities. We're still in a risk-off posture. Small caps are underperforming. The NASDAQ has not been able to break out, so it may decline from that quadruple top. And then earnings season, which can be either positive or negative. On the positive side, the longer-term seasonality and setups, those are still there, and they will remain for the whole year. Lower price levels may provide some support if we see some weakness in the market. 
So our conclusion, the S&P, it's mixed, it's not trending, and it's showing a lot of negative divergences. In the short term, we're mixed. In intermediate term, we're mixed. Long term, we continue to be positive as long as we remain above the 200-day simple moving average. So thank you. I hope you have a really good day, and I will talk to you in the next video.